So let's give a big welcome to Eddie Wade. So Star Whackers is a heightened reality. It's Randy giving a performance where he's basically fleeing for his life. And in that context, he's taken Shakespeare's uh, most profound moments and turned them into a living, breathing performance. Uh, something with true fear and uh, sort of a blue collar feel to it. Now, um, you should know a couple of things. One is tonight we have an autistic gentleman named Adam. Adam, where are you? Adam! And I told Adam that uh, the villain who pursues Randy in the film uh, is nasty to autistic people, along with Randy. So he's cool with that. Right, Adam? Yeah, okay. What do you have to say about that? Anything? Okay, he's a bad guy. Bad guys say the rotten pigs, right? Okay, now, the bullets are blank, and the penis is prosthetic. And there's a lot of nudity, so I hope you love it. Enjoy it. shrieked at thy birth, an evil sign. The night crow cried, a boding luckless time. Dogs howled, and hideous tempests shook down trees. The raven rooked her in the chimney's top, and chirping pies in the dead oh, They're gonna make a big star out of me. We'll make a film about a man that's sad and lonely. naturally well I bet you I'm gonna be a big star I might win an Oscar you can never tell the movie's gonna make me a big star cause I can play the part so well or make a scene about a man that's sad and lonely begging down we're going to do, uh, they're going to uh, come out uh, May 3rd on iTunes and uh, everywhere you get your music. And this first one is, uh, has never been, we've never performed it in front of a, a live audience. Uh, so uh, we're going to, we're going to do that at this time. And um, uh, let me uh, introduce real quick. This is Bruce, guitar, Rich. Rich on bass, John Drum, Doug, Cello, Mark, Guitar, and I'm Randy. And uh, no, we're gonna, these are the fugitives. And we're gonna go for it here. Okay. that I have nothing but respect for the law. And I've known the difference between right and wrong since I was knee high with my mom. I learned the Ten Commandments and I lived the golden rule. I never thought that criminals were really all that cool. I grew up trusting cops and courts that justice would prevail to exonerate the innocent and put the bad guys in jail. But the law doesn't always work that way. No, it's painful, but it's true. You see, the tax go out the window when 
The DA has it in for you. Mr. DA man, Mr. DA man. Yeah. 
tokens on eBay. I'm talking about whackers! Whackers! Cheesy star whackers! Whackers! Those dirty tote taggers! Whackers! Those sleazy star whackers!
to take a moment for Randy to mop the sweat off his brow. And those of you that want to do a Q&A can stick around. Uh, anybody else? Thank you so much for coming to the show tonight. I know it was a long night, but it was definitely a solid evening with the Quays. So I hope you enjoyed it. Questions. And, uh, yeah, all fugitives. Get, get in line. Just stop running. Something on the spot. Yeah, yeah get in line. Quit hiding from us. Come down here. Get down there, fugitive. Um, so, uh, Adam. Adam, can you come up here? And I, I want to take a picture with you. Is he here? Yes. Oh, okay. Virginia. Here we are. Thank you, Adam. Yeah. Thank you for coming. All right, Adam wanted to get a picture with us up here, so. Uh, Alrighty. <laughs> Here, sit down. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's an open forum here. So, uh, now's the time to ask a question. Yeah, anything you want to ask, let us know. Okay. Anyone, anyone, come on up to the microphone. Come up to the microphone. I have a question. Well, first of all, um, it's a two-part question. First of all, I'd like to say you guys are awesome. Oh. And uh, the, se the second question is, clearly some of the strongest elements in the film are, are the comedic elements. Can you tell me what um, the inspiration was for the humor in the film? I mean, and it's amazing to me because you can see the definition between the characters. Even in the <laughs> no, but, but like Randy in the movie is funny, right? But the other guys are not. So it's, it's funny, right? <laughs> but my inspiration uh, was Randy. Next. Hi, Randy. My name is Andrew. And I'm also a fellow Buck Owens fan, and I can tell by the movie that you are a Buck Owens fan. I'm curious what your favorite Buck song is. Uh, my favorite Buck song is uh, probably the one that I sang. Uh, they're going to put me in the movies. I, uh, I love his stuff. Streets of Bakersfield. And, uh, that's why? Yeah. Streets of Bakersfield. Bakersfield, yeah. Streets of Bakersfield. But I, I, love, uh, I love Buck Owens. Yeah, he's, he's one of my favorites. Hi Randy, how you doing? Good. I'm good. My my name is uh, John. John. Just in the sky. Born yeah. Korea. I'm a Mohawk from New York originally, and uh, my family's in Canada. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Randy, and um, <clears throat> I, I've got a pretty long political history in the United States. Uh, I was involved in the 1971 Attica Rebellion. You remember Attica? Right. Yes, yeah. at the age of 19. So I was the only one. Uh, convicted or eventually you being in one of the ringleaders there. In 2009, <clears throat> I organized a mass demonstration in Calgary to keep George Bush out of Canada, according to Canadian criminal law, the Immigration and Refugees Act. Now, we, again, he's coming to British Columbia and Surrey, he's coming to BC, Surrey, BC, uh, this October the 20th, and we're waging a mass campaign plan to keep him out. We don't want any war criminals out, and we're waging a campaign to keep George Bush out and Randy Quaid in. Ah. 
Yeah, and no, no. I want you to know, uh, uh, I want to give you the flyers, and I also want you to know that the, all the nations from around here, many of the chiefs are extending a protectorate status to you and your family. Lovely. Oh, my, thank you so much. My, uh, my, my question to you, Randy, is this. It's a two-part question. Uh, Charlie Sheen also happens to be a friend of mine. Cool. Uh, and he's also... <laughs> And, and I'm also an actor, all right, yeah, yeah. but now the question I'm asking you is, um, what's something funny about 9-11? As far as a conspiracy theory? Yeah. I don't, I don't uh, subscribe to the conspiracy okay. theory. Not will on you, that one. Will you, be, will you possibly be there in October? for this jury demonstration to keep George Bush out of Canada. If there's anything I can do toward that end, yes. I'll be happy to do it. I'd love to contact you, actually. Thank you very much, Randy. God bless you. I want to say something else to you. Wait a sec. So, legally, how are you going to keep him out? What are you going to do? Uh, the, there, is a, there is a law. It's called the Immigration and Refugees Act uh, of Canada. And legally, he is uh, anybody who is a credibly accused war criminal is not allowed into Canada. All right, and and, and and this is Canadian law. He's a self-confessed war criminal. He subscribed to torture, like your movie so so greatly showed in the Star Wackers. He confessed to allowing uh, his uh, Justice Department to commit torture in violation of Article Three of the Geneva Conventions. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Look fast. Hi, Randy. Hi, Natalie. I just wanted to ask you, are there stars that are actually getting whacked? Are there stars that are actually getting whacked? Yes. And is there a way that you're able to show that on a documentary? Because when I came here tonight, I believe that I was going to be watching a documentary on what you just stated as a yes. Right. And I did not see that, but I would like to see that. Yeah. I purchased a $25 ticket believing I was going to see that. Yeah. So, can you tell me, why did, I not, why did I not see that? If there are stars actually being whacked, I would truly like to know, because it makes you, I would like to hear facts. What I saw was lovely, but what what is not the fact? I don't think that's a cool question. I know you don't, which means that you're being a coward. I know, but you got my money unfair. But I do I do want to state as the, the program of the show. It was at, no, just to make it clear, it was it was picked up as documentary by a lot of news sources, but it was always billed as docudrama. Which is different. Oh, was, uh, yeah. Do you say that Heath Ledger was whacked? Is this true? Do you say that? You did. So then you gotta please just be honest next time because I came to watch a docudrama on honesty. Yeah, we'll make that next. And the fact is the fact. Do not, yeah, do not profit to your honor, young people died yeah. of no cause. I thought the door is going to shut. I believe that Heath Ledger was one of the healthiest young men that I had ever met. He played Australian football. He was a superb athlete. And I believe that he was... I, I do believe that there is a definite possibility that he was murdered yes and there is there is this docu docudrama was about Randy and the hyper surreal aspect of what it is to be pursued to your own death and we and we put it into an impressionistic form the next one will show thank you, you for your we'll, we'll do the next one thank you for your comments next Hey, Rand. So, was that movie like a metaphor? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Can you go into a little detail about that? It's something that came out of our, um, I guess it just came out of our unconsciousness because a lot of the things that have happened to us since we made that movie, and they're in the movie, 
had actually come to fruition and become our reality. So it's uh, like the whole thing when we're talking about uh, Randy Quaid's uh, breaking into the bathroom window and using the facilities and all that. Uh, that kind of happened to us. You're a Beatles song, man. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Oh, also, a uh, two-part question. To be or not to be? No. <laughs> Next. Uh, good evening. Uh, yeah, so I hope you guys had fun, and I think some of us were kind of bored, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm not here to be cool. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but I would wonder if uh, you would consider that the people who were pursuing you would also be some of the same people and or groups of people that put you in a position of fame and power in the first place. Of what? In the first place? Fame and power in the first place. Did the people that create you then decide that you weren't going to be anymore? Um, well, no, not, not so much, no. But, but there, I, I believe that there is uh, a certain um, uh, level that, that uh, stars today, the star system is dead, basically, and the powers that be have killed it and made sure that the star system is dead. Back in the 70s, 60s, the, uh, after the studio system died, the actors uh, and, and directors, the creative people, took control of the industry and were making all the movies. And um, that's when you had the easy writers and the five easy pieces and all these wonderful movies. And um, so, uh, really, the, the actors, creative people, uh, had control, and and, this, and there were big stars came out of that you know, era. Uh, and lately, it's there's been a concerted effort to stamp out the uh, the stars, and uh, anyone who rises to a certain level, uh, they just hire another actor unknown to play you know, the, the, the parts. So there's no, I guess George Clooney is probably like the last real movie star, you know, it's like. After the list that was very long, there just became this sort of very boring casting string of, of people. Sorry, what? I can't hear you. There. Oh, okay. So essentially, you know, so when Randy started working in the early 70s, it was like Marlon Brando, Jack Nicholson, Randy, Hal Ashby, people like that. Then, you know, when Randy did Brokeback Mountain, the very talented actors like Jake Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger. And then after that, it was really kind of like everybody that got cast in a horror film or a mainstream movie was sort of controllable. But it's really not um, that there's some conspiracy in Hollywood or some major power structure. It's just people want to make money, so they're trying to have people that they don't have to pay, essentially, or people that can't control the situation. Just want to let you guys know we do have a time limit here. We've got about like 10, about 10, 10, 15 minutes left. So um, keep your questions really brief. And you may notice this cello playing over here. When you got cool questions, he's going to play cool music and groove with you. When you don't got cool questions... And you hear that? That's time to get off the mic. All right. Thanks. All right. Well, I'm going to try to be right. cool. Thanks, nice cool. This guy's cool. I'm going to try to be cool. <laughs> uh, my name's Jacques. A uh, huge fan. Uh, I loved your commitment to this piece, and I don't know if it was uh, your idea or his idea to That's eat the grass, bad. making yourself like a cow, and the, it was beautiful. Um, I loved that. I thought it was coming to a documentary, and it turned into the docudrama. So thank you. Uh, my big question, uh, although I would love to see the documentary as well, the big question is, uh, why was it the spirit of Falstaff? Is that just the part that you've always loved, or was there something significant to the tapestry of the film why Falstaff was chosen? Falstaff was a character that I was playing uh, in, a, in a musical, actually, uh, that was headed for Broadway and uh, got derailed. I think the producers really had the insurance scam running on that one. And uh, I, I uh, got a lot of uh, flack from those assholes. <laughs> and um, so we, we parted company uh, very, uh, well, it wasn't pretty. Um, but the, the, the character of Falstaff 
the hair that I'm in the, the opening scene, uh, the hair that I'm playing with, that was my hair from that, that character. And I, I cut it off the, the last morning we were in, uh, down in Seattle, where we were doing the, uh, the show. The run. They were doing the out-of-town run. And it was a metaphor. And I, I uh, so that was the hair from that. So that's all about being banned and all that crap is uh, all about that that musical. But uh, we didn't really have time to go into all that with the movie. It was just sort of a metaphor that goes goes with what we were uh, creating. I thought you were going to do a Jim Morrison on that one. <laughs> The, the thing is, I witnessed the performance, and it was a phenomenal performance as Falstaff, and they had a, it was all teed up to go at the Belasco Theater on Broadway, and all of a sudden we started, it just the producers were not doing anything to get the show done. All of a sudden they were attacking us, and we realized that it was some sort of a fraudulent situation, but when he cut off his hair, it was like Jodie Foster and the Accused, and we, we took the hair with us on this film, and that's what he was playing with at the beginning. Uh, one quick question for each of you. Uh, Amy, where was that filmed? Because I'm interested where you got the camels. Oh, the camels. Well, the camels were brought to Texas for the Calvary. So that's why there were camels. So it was filmed in Texas? Yeah, Texas, right on the edge. West Texas. A lot of it in New Mexico. And Randy, can you really play the violin? Actually, I did a, I did a, a movie with... Uh, Milos Foreman about four or five years ago, and I had to learn to play the violin on this one uh, piece. And I learned the hell out of that piece, and I practiced every day for three hours, had lessons, and then once we shot the scene, and that was over, I put the violin down, never picked it up again. But I did for that, that scene in the movie, and I, just, I was just kind of going nuts on it. Last question. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that was awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Like, amazing to both you guys. Um, I'm here with my family, and um, some are from Vancouver, and some of us came from Victoria. We did that as far away from where you guys came, but uh, uh, I guess I have one question. The question that I had was really where you filmed that, and she stole my question, by the way, in the line. <laughs> I was trying to like keep it to do what did you film. like about where we filmed it? I mean, was so it the, the landscape? I had a question specific. What did I like about it? I loved. I thought what you did was amazing. And I think you answered a lot of questions that I had, and my head's still going with it, which is why I'm here. Am I here? Like, is a I figure for him. Sorry, he's got like a really high up top. Um, I'll just, here's my question. You have a question. Okay, you, you yeah, must be familiar with this too, right? Yeah. Dead, solid, perfect. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's what that film was. And that's what you guys will forever be to the people I care about. And God bless you and well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, um, first of all, Randy, that was super fucking brave. Thank you, um, I have a question since now you're in Vancouver and you're an amazing actor. How, I'm an independent film producer in town and I got a cool project. How would I pitch that to you? Like, what's the problem? Throw it up here on the stage. Send it to the Rio. No. <laughs> that you were exiled to Canada. You had your conspiracy theories, all your fears. What what do you why do you think it's gonna stop because you come to Canada? These these fears and these conspiracies. Well okay. Yeah John why don't you answer something? I, I don't think they're gonna stop. I don't know that stop. Like another That's what this cool question to me. No. <laughs> Do you think that coming to Canada is going to make the conspiracy, the theories, or, or conspiracy, what, stuff? You, you guys were exiled to Canada. They were not exiled. They came, they came to Canada for their, their issues and their concerns. Why do you think because coming to Canada will solve their issues? Like, 
how do they think that's, it's going to end or to stop or improve their situation? Well, because Canada is the most wonderful nation. Bullshit! Move! Next question. No! Answer it! Are you safe in Canada? He's like the best character ever. Oh, thank you. We watch it every Christmas. Okay, question. It might be a sensitive topic, I don't know. We haven't heard anything about it. Your brother, Dennis, does he support you coming to Canada? Is he going to come visit you? You know, I really don't know. I don't know if he supports me. I, I can't get a fix on Dennis right now. That's what he says. But I love him too. We did make a movie together, uh, Long Riders, yeah, and we did a play together, uh, True West, in New York, and uh, about 20 years ago. Dennis is scared of Randy. Oh, please. On stage. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Another one here. Final question of the night. How long ago do you start filming the movie, and how do you think it will change since you've come to Canada? Oh, I, I, I'll answer that. Um, we started not very long ago, about a year ago. And how will it change here? Uh, Post-production, music, uh, sh you know, various scenes will get just a hair. I'll shave off little edits here and there. Uh, probably Don't add shave off too more. much. Probably add some more. Shave it all off. I, have, I think I have 60 hours of footage since we came up here. Two-minute video. Turn it into a pilot. Okay. Yes, the last question. <laughs> How did you find <laughs> your Vancouver Bank? Yeah, good question. Let me answer. Craig so, Randy and I were at the law office of Miller Thompson, who saved our ass. And Randy walked down the hall to his lawyer, John Schufelt, and said, Do you know anybody who can uh, play the guitar? And John, you take it from here. I can play the guitar. He said no. I said yeah. <laughs> No, uh, these bandmates and I have been played for several, several years. We're all lawyers. Uh, we just played for fun. And, uh, Boo! And for free! And a lawyer! Which all took money from people's hard work. Randy, I understand, can I ask you a question? I understand you're related to Gene Autry, is that right? Uh, yeah, he's my, uh, he was my grandfather's cousin. And uh, so I guess he's my third cousin. So that's distant, very distant. Yeah, you got a great voice. Randy. You're beautiful. Thank you. I love performing for you. I love it that you came out here tonight. And I hope you all had a great time. And thank you for your questions and your your support. We appreciate it. We deeply appreciate it.